Well, the other big story today, an unprecedented situation with the Supreme Court ordering for the first time the arrest of a sitting High Court judge for contempt. Justice Karnan of the Calcutta High Court is heading to six months in jail after taking on the top court where he's made allegations of corruption against senior judges. But the Supreme Court has also issued a gag order on the media from reporting Justice Karnan's statements, which is why we can't tell you what he said at his press conference soon after the order. The very first time a sitting High Court judge is being sent to jail by the top court. A defiant Justice Karnan hours after the Supreme Court ordered his arrest for contempt. A furious Supreme Court bench of seven judges headed by the Chief Justice sentenced Justice Karnan to six months jail, ordering his immediate arrest by the West Bengal police. Justice Karnan, who has been serving at the Calcutta High Court, has been fighting with the top court for months now, accusing senior judges of corruption. But hours after the order, Justice Karnan held a press conference. The media, however, could not report it, since the Supreme Court has issued a gag order, saying the media cannot carry any statements of the judge. An unprecedented situation that prompted even the Supreme Court to hold a High Court judge in contempt. But some legal experts are of the view that even the Supreme Court may have overreached in its powers. Inside court, senior lawyer K.K. Venugopal and counsel for the Madras High Court asked the Chief Justice, court should take into account the blemish that may be cast by sentencing a judge. The Chief Justice disagreed, saying, if we do not send him to jail, there will be a blemish that the Supreme Court has condoned the contempt committed by a judge. He has to be seen as a citizen of India and not as a judge. Justice Karnan is due to retire next month and now may end up spending his last month as judge in jail. The issue clearly isn't dying down soon. With Dalit groups like these, worship Justice Karnan's photograph by pouring milk on it. In New Delhi, Siddharth Pandey, Findy TV. Well, joining us on the program tonight to take a look at the ramifications of that big development, we have Ms. Indra Jai Singh, uh, former Additional Solicitor General of India and Senior Advocate of the Supreme Court, uh, Vikar Singh, former Additional Solicitor General of India, also with us, Tavleen Singh, columnist and author, joins us on the program this evening. Uh, let me ask you first, Indra Jai Singh, uh, you have in your first reactions uh, to this uh, order by the Supreme Court uh, actually questioned its constitutional validity saying that it's actually highly suspect and what is the part that the Supreme Court has to hold a judge guilty of contempt? If you could explain to us uh, why you, you're saying that. You see, this order amounts to an order of the removal of a judge from the office. And uh, the Constitution provides a procedure for that in Article 217 and 124 of the Constitution. A judge can only be removed by Parliament on an impeachment motion after being given an opportunity to be heard. Now, it is true that the court has the power of contempt. I don't deny that, Article 129. But there has to be a way of reading the Constitution harmoniously and allowing Parliament to remove a judge who commits an act of misconduct. I don't understand why that was not done, which is the reason why I question the constitutionality of this order. And you will notice that the order gives no reasons at all for, for having, under what provision of law, apart from saying that they have the power of contempt. But there is also the power of removal of the parliament. So how do you reconcile these two? There is no answer in the, in the order. I'm not suggesting that he has not committed an act of misconduct. Maybe he has. But there's a procedure for removal of a judge, and that has not been followed. Uh, uh, Vikash, do you agree with Indra Jai Singh on this point? Uh, do you believe that the, that the court uh, actually uh, went beyond its brief uh, in, in uh, ordering this arrest of Justice Karnan? Well, I don't agree with her, but I have my own reasons for what I have to say. This is not a case, firstly, where you could say that this was civil contempt. Civil contempt is when you disobey an order of the court. There was no disobedience of an order by the court. This was a case where he had made a complaint against some judges of the Supreme Court and the High Court to the Prime Minister of India saying that they are corrupt. Now that could be a criminal contempt if at all. According to me, this kind of a contempt jurisdiction should not have been invoked in a case like this. If Even if you wanted to, you could have simpliciter issued notice for contempt, criminal contempt by a two-judge bench rather than constituting a seven-judge bench. There is no reason, no justification why a seven-judge bench was formed. 
the only justification that I can think of is that in a five judge bench, they had held earlier in the Supreme Court Bar Association matter that you can't do anything but punish somebody for contempt in, a contempt in the contempt jurisdiction. Now they wanted to strip him of judicial work, which obviously they could not have done in a combination of less than five or even of five. So apparently they made a seven, seven combination. Now who said that the five is wrong? Who, dis, who f felt that the judgment of five judges is wrong? If there was no reference of the five judge being wrong, there was no occasion to constitute a seven. Thirdly, by constituting the seven judge bench and then uh, punishing him for contempt and not even recording what is the nature of contempt committed by him. I mean, you should give reasons as to what exactly is the contempt, criminal contempt made out against the judge. By punishing him in this manner, you have brought down the whole judiciary into a bad light, I feel, because there was no occasion for this kind of an unprecedented step. He was going to retire in a month's time. If a normal contempt notice had been issued, probably the Chief Justice of the High Court would have taken away the judicial work from him on that basis itself. And he would have made to retire in the next two months. So to take on this jurisdiction, basically the judiciary, because who actually, Karnan is a, is a product of this collegium system, which is the judiciary exactly. appointing judges. And clearly they are not doing their job well to appoint somebody like Karnan as a judge of the High Court. So you, it's your fault and you are only making this into a big issue, showing to the world that you are not doing your job correctly of appointing the correct people to the higher courts. So what have you achieved? I don't understand, except sending one person to jail for six Nidhi. months well, uh, and, yeah, okay. and making this yes, whole um, case very sensational. Indra Jai Singh and, and Nidhi, the, then I just say yes. something? Yes. Yes. I, uh, Nidhi, three orders, one upon the other, all three of which I consider beyond the jurisdiction of the court. Number one, stripping Justice Kannan of judicial work. Mr. Vikas Singh used that expression, stripping him of judicial work. By what authority of law was it done? Secondly, asking for him to be medically examined for mental health. No person can be examined medically without informed consent, much less examined for medical health. Tomorrow, you and I can be picked up and we can be told you will be examined to see whether your mental health is in order. By what authority of law? I have to consent. To, my, to me being examined, there was no consent quite clearly. Second unlawful order. And finally, throwing the person in prison. For what? For violating two unlawful orders. So I find the whole thing so sad. You know, it's a sad day for the country today where the legitimacy of constitutional institutions is being, is being questioned. And uh, it, it's, it's an order. It's not even a judgment. I'm raising a point that this can only be done by Parliament. But where is the argument? Where is the judgment on the basis of which I can read and say, well, I agree or disagree? To that extent, I agree with Mr. Vikas Singh that you're not even telling us what is the alleged com well, consent. Well, I, I, I just content. want to, yeah, I want to take that to Tavleen. Uh, because the, indicated the procedure. Tavleen, the other thing that's happened today uh, is the gag order on the media. Uh, now, the print and the electronic media cannot uh, publish or broadcast any of the statements that Justice Karnan makes. And, you know, as you, uh, we were airing in our story just now, uh, he held a press conference shortly after that. Uh, we, ca we can't even, you know, uh, broadcast, you know, what he said. And uh, several editors have tweeted and, and said today that they believe that this this is a misstep. Uh, that you know gag orders in today's day and age, uh, uh, you know they believe uh, 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 you know don't find a place. How do you feel about that? Because does that uh, uh, you know in a sense tie with what Indra Jai Singh and Vikas Singh are saying that there is this lack of transparency in the way that this whole thing has happened in the last few months? Uh, look, I'm no constitutional expert and I'm not a lawyer. But what I will say, and maybe I'm going to be put in jail for contempt for saying it, is that there's too many things that the Supreme Court has been doing lately that indicates judicial overreach. They've been interfering in policy. They've been making policies that, that cost the government a, a lot of problems. And, you know, I totally agree with, um, with Indra Jai Singh that if you want to remove a judge, you've got to go through the procedure. But I really think that since we are in a crisis created by the Supreme Court itself, we should use, the government should use this to, you know, to change the system of appointing judges. We're the only country in the world where judges appoint themselves. They're their own judges. They're their own. I mean, there's no, they're a law unto themselves. 
And I think that what comes out from this particular incident is this, that we've got to change that. It's wrong. I mean, look how hard it is for, you know, for a, an American president to appoint a Supreme Court judge. But in India, the judges themselves make all these decisions. So, you know, I mean, if I go to jail for contempt, Nidhi, I'm going to catch you. But, you know, I think yeah, it needs to be I'll probably go with you because you're, I'm on the show. I'm anchoring the show. But on the gag order specifically, Tavleen, as a journalist yourself, you know, uh, we're living in times where, you know, often we go to court, uh, you know, to fight against executive gag orders uh, or, or attempts to censor. And so if the court resorts to a gag order, you kind of wonder uh, where, where do we run to uh, then, you know, f for that free speech? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, who's going to watch the watchdog? I totally agree. I mean, here they decide when, when, when the media is going to be gagged tomorrow, they'll decide which channels should be censored and taken off air, which newspapers should be closed, which journalists should go to jail. It's all a little too out of hand.